Dr. Yogapriya, please hang chair for a moment. Yes, sir. Good evening, friends. Uh, we warmly welcome you for the uh, yet another edition of the Postgraduate Clinics. Um, we have uh, eminent faculty joining us today. First, I wish uh, Professor Kanna sir, Professor Rajiv Sakai sir, who have been with us for time inception and the other senior faculty here. Today, we have uh, faculty from Alde Institute, Rishikesh, uh, Professor Amit Gupta, who has kindly contributed her, his department's postgraduate, Dr. Yoga Priya, to present a case. We have Prakash Asmal, professor from uh, Ames Bhubaneswar, and we expect uh, Dr. Prakash Garg and Dr. Anurag Srivatsap to join shortly. Friends, uh, we have two important exam-oriented case discussion. Uh, Pro professor Pankaj Modi has kindly contributed Dr. Abhijit Rajput. He'll be presenting a case of uh, locally advanced uh, CA press. And uh, Dr. Yoga Priya will be presenting a right layer for some mass part discussion. So we, uh, without uh, much ado, we will start the case discussion. So we request the uh, uh, candidates. Uh, first, we'll go with uh, Dr. Yoga Priya. Yoga Priya, please introduce yourself your unit chief and head of the department and start your presentation. I'm sure you've been with us earlier, but uh, for the people yes, who are sir. joining us first time, generally we allow the student to run through the history without stopping. And then once the history part is completed, the faculty revises each slide and questions or comments and uh, give their clarifications. And then the uh, clinical part is uh, uh, allowed to present without any disruption. At the end of clinical part, then the, all the clinical examination slides are revisited to ask questions. This happens for the first half an hour of the classes. And then the second part will comprise about the evaluations, management, surgical issues, and uh, various allied issues. So this is how the pattern goes. So I wish all of you a very warm good evening. And I request the faculty to kindly take over the day's proceedings. Uh, Dr. Yoga Priya, please share your PowerPoint and start your presentation. Good luck to you. Good evening, respected faculties. I'm Dr. Yoga Priya, third year postgraduate from All India Institute of Medical Sciences. I'm doing a case presentation on abdominal lump and right iliac fossa mass under my guidance, under the guidance of my guide, Professor Amit Gupta, sir. And my HOD is Professor Som Prakash Basu, sir. Mr. X, a 34 years old gentleman, a resident of Bijanur, Uttar Pradesh, a tailor by occupation, presented to our OPD with a compliance of pain in the right lower abdomen for six months and lump in the right lower abdomen for six months. History of presenting illness. The patient was apparently normal six months before, after which he developed pain in the right lower abdomen, which was insidious in onset, dull aching, non-radiating, there was no aggravating or relieving factors. There was no aggravating factors. The patient gives history of relief in pain initially by taking over-the-counter pain medications. He also noticed a lump in the right lower abdomen for six months, which was insidious in onset, rapidly increasing in size and associated with pain. There was history of loss of appetite present. There was an history of loss of weight, which was documented more than 10 kgs in a period of four months. The patient gave history of one episode of melina, which was two months back. There was no history of fever, nausea, vomiting. There is no history of altered bowel habits, no history of bleeding per rectum, no history of jaundice, no history of swellings anywhere else in the body, no history of cough or hemoptysis. Personal history, the patient takes a mixed diet, no addictive habits, no bladder or bowel disturbances, is married with three children, no history of any contact with tuberculosis patient. Family history, no history of any similar disease in the family. No history of any malignancy or any malignancy-related malignancy death in the family. Summary, a 34 years gentleman with pain in the lower abdomen for six months with a gradually progressive lump for six months with loss of appetite and loss of weight with no fever or altered bowel habits or bleeding per rectum. Yeah. Yopriya, what is your impression with this summary? Dr. Kanavula, can we start questioning or should should she first complete the history part? We can, we can. So, so please. Yeah. So, uh, 
Jokpriya, the kind of presentation your patient has, what is the diagnosis which is striking to your mind? So, uh, considering the pain and the lump with uh, uh, constitutional symptoms of loss of appetite and loss of weight, I would keep uh, malignancy as my first diagnosis here, sir. No, malignancy is okay, mm. but uh, from which part? Mm. Uh, probably arising from uh, right side of the colon or cecum or vesicle path, sir. Okay. Uh, okay, doctor. Priya, so what is various diagnosis comes in your mind based only on the history? Yes. So one is carcinoma, cecum. And yeah. uh, since the location of the lump would uh, suggest me to watch the ileocecal tuberculosis also, but the patient yeah. is not giving any history of fever or evening rise of temperature. Okay. What is the age of the patient? 34 years, sir. He's 34 years, isn't it? Probably. Yes, sir. So if you have to choose between the ileocecal tuberculosis and the malignancy, which one you will choose? For the ileocecal, ileocecal tuberculosis. Okay. So why you are not keeping the ileocecal as the first diagnosis? Uh, I would. The patient is not giving any history of fever or any evening rise of temperature or cough mm -hmm. or any chest issues. Sir. Yes. Anything else which can support your diagnosis of the carcinoma? In the there history? is a lump which is palpable, sir. And he has given a history of rapid progression of the lump also. Mm -hmm. uh, no, our, our right leg uh, fossa malignancy is palpable very usually in six months. Or the palpable. Pardon, sir. I, could, I couldn't follow, sir. Our hmm? right leg fossa malignancy is yeah. palpable. Uh, do they report with a palpable lump? They do, sir. Most of the time? Or is it is it a late presentation? It's a vague presentation, sir, but they do present with lump in the right iliac fossa. Okay, okay. Let's let, look. You can't come to a diagnosis of malignancy just by mm -hmm. by six months of lump and loss of weight, right? Okay, yes, sir. So what you should you should come with a differential. What is, in a thirty-four-year-old gentleman? What will be the differential? I have a differential of ileocecal tuberculosis also, sir. Anything else? And RAF. The patient could have any abscess. Yes. What about a psoas abscess? Psoas abscess could be a differential. Sir. No fever what history, is? but still it would. Uh, any lymphadeno lymphadenopathy, sir? Lymphadenopathy uh, per se without any, any, any cause? Or uh, if it's a... Age, considering the age also, I could keep an undescended testis was also as a differential. Right. In, in history, we, I mean, uh, just a lump with loss of appetite and loss of weight, right? So why are you going for uh, earlier uh, tuber, um, malignancy of the, of the right-sided uh, gut? Why not un uh, malignancy of, the, of an undescended testis? You don't know. You've not examined. Yes, sir. So here, after history, you have to keep Keep an eye that what are the structures in that area which can give to this kind of a swelling. Sure, sir. Okay. What are the various ways that tuberculosis can present as a lump in the right leg, oh, sir? So, either it could form as a cold abscess and present as a lump if it is where, sitting where through the abdominal. Abscess? Where will be the cold abscess? So, if it is in the anterior abdominal wall, if the content is uh, seeping and in, burrowing into the anterior abdominal wall, it could present as a lump there or swelling there in the anterior abdominal wall in the RF, Okay, agreed cold abscess of the anterior abdominal wall. What other things can give a lump in the right leg fossa because of tuberculosis? If there is any clumping of bowel over there uh, because of adhesions, it could form a lump there. Right. And any... Uh, Structuring of the bubble per se could cause a lump. So, if there is one, you say that it is probably the small bowel problem may be there, okay, or ileocecal problem may be there. Anything else which can give rise to lump 
in tuberculosis. It is not involved in the bowel is there, but something else is getting involved. Lymph node is getting involved, sir. Right. So it may be tubercular lymphadenitis may be there. Yes. What else? Anything in the retroperitoneum? Uh, abscess, sir. So as abscess, iliosoas abscess can present as a lump. Yes. So these are the various ways by which a tuberculosis can present it as a lump in the right iliac fossa. Yeah. Can there be a cold yes, abscess itself in the muscle wall, in the parietal wall? Yes, sir. Is it that common? Or does it migrate? Or, or does it just trickle from the spine? Or spine? Which one is common? I think uh, the iliosoas abscess or any trickle from spine would be more common. Yes. And... Why doesn't it? Uh, why is it not that common in the muscle itself? Because of the spread of the bacilli, sir, the route which it takes to for what the, is there in the muscle, sir? which will be preventing the growth of the bacilli, lactic acid. Okay, and also the muscle will be having a good blood supply, so that hinders actually the growth. Now, another question is that, as suggested by my colleagues, so you told that it is a case of a malignancy in the first go. So, in this six months, when it is a palpable mass in the right iliac fossa, is there any history of any intestinal obstruction in this patient? No, sir. The patient clinically didn't give any uh, history of obstructive symptoms, sir. Are you expecting any obstruction? Are you any expecting any obstruction? So, it might if the uh, if the patient is giving an history of rapidly progressive lump, it is an intraluminal mass or anything. I would expect an obstruction to happen, sir. Is it that common on the right side? There will be obstruction. No, sir. More on the left-sided pathology, the obstructions will be more. Why? So it is, uh, the colon per se on the sigmoid side tends to have more of constipation and uh, forming obstructive symptoms sir, rather right. than the right side colon. Right. So on the right side, oh, what actually is the presentation? Supposedly, per se, it is a case of a carcinoma, you believe. So the patient would uh, mainly present with the anemia, first of all, and then... Uh, Patient will have loss of weight and appetite. And then probably a lump could be palpable in right-sided masses. Okay. So you told in the that one episode of melina was there in this patient. Are you expecting that this melina is related to this right iliac fossa mass? It could be, sir. But the patient gives a vague history of that. Uh, he said that he feels that there was one episode of melina. But after that, it didn't recur or... Uh, Are you expecting melina in case of a right iliac fossa mass? No, sir, I'm not. Why? So melina per se, in a, it I think it would more of be a left colon pathology giving rise to a melina yep. or any other uh, symptoms with the patient so, rather than what a is right. It melina? What is the definition of melina actually? It's a black tarry stool, uh, foul smelling. Sticky. Okay, so is it uh, common in the left side colon? How is it possible? No, you are confusing. No, sir. I am sorry. Uh, poor it is possible in the... Yeah. Mm. Poor blood bleeding. Got my point. So it is not possible. It may not be related in this patient that melina is related to this mass. Okay, please carry on. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Yoga Priya. Why do you think this person had an episode of melina? Then? What could be related to it? So the patient might have any uh, gastric ulcers or any urinal ulcers per se before, why? which why, why? wouldn't have been. Why? Diagnosed. Why? How can you relate? How can you say that he's having? He could be having erosive gastritis or dermatitis. He per se doesn't have any addictive habits, sir. But uh, maybe because of his uh, food habits or. He's having uh, pain for the last six months. Yes, sir. He does. He might so have taken a lot of painkillers pain also. Pain? Yeah, he, he must, was initially taking uh, over-a-counter medications to relieve his pain. That, that, that could have caused erosive gastritis or dermatitis, drug-related, okay? Okay, sir. But that was just a single episode? Yes, sir. Okay. You know, what is the altered bowel habit and what is alternating bowel habit? So, altered bowel habits is a presentation where the patient will either have a diarrhea or a 
constipation whereas an alternating bowel aphids mostly happens in a left side of colon pathologies where the patient might have constipation initially followed by a spurious diarrhea because of the loading of the content below above the obstructed uh, segment the patient might have initially constipation with and then a diarrhea episode also okay so what is yeah. the difference between the right side malignancy and the left side why there is a difference in the presentation so is it because of the anatomical like sigmoid per se oh. i'm not sure which has a more diameter right or left uh, left sir left has more diameter so right cecum has 7.5 cm diameter and Sigmoid is right. Okay, right what is the cause? Right of... is more, while left right is, is more less. So, yeah, so that right is, is one. More. Second C reason. What is the second reason? What is the type of the stool matter? So what for is the difference between most... a stool on the right and the left side? So the left uh, side will have more of a formed or uh, so more solid on the left side compared to liquid on the right side. Yeah. Right side, sir. Okay. Type of the malignancy. Difference between the right and the left side. What are the various gross types of the Colonic carcinomas. I don't know carcinoma, which gross, is the most gross. common. Not, not pathology. Gross, gross. Um, what are the gross know, types of the colonic carcinomas? Cultural proliferative growth, it can happen, uh, which will be more common in the right side, sir. Yes. And yeah, on the left side? It is a more of infiltrative variety or indurated variety okay. or a tubular variety. Hmm? Okay. On the right side, it is ulcerative or proliferative or ulceroproliferative variety, while on the left side, it is a tubular or indurated variety. So these okay. are the three reasons that why there is a difference in the presentation. The diameter of the okay. colon, the type of the stool which is there, the type of the malignancy which is there. And that is the reason that you get the alternating bowel habits on the left side, while the patient from the right side usually present doesn't pre present with the obstruction, but may present with the melina or hematochesia or the diarrhea may be there. So, but not the features of obstruction are there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's assume that it is an intestinal tuberculosis because uh, age of the patient and uh, as we have discussed. So, uh, you told that there is no history of pulmonary tuberculosis. What percentage of these uh, patients do have synchro um, uh, pulmonary tuberculosis also associated? Any idea? The percentage? Uh... Exactly, roughly? So, I'm not aware of the percentage of the type, so. It's only just up to 20 percent is so it is not that common so don't okay. assume that uh, pulmonary tuberculosis should be present means diagnosis should be uh, intestinal tuberculosis got it yes sir. Uh, abdominal tuberculosis a primary tuberculosis or secondary tuberculosis sir abdominal tuberculosis is a primary tuberculosis or secondary tuberculosis so it can present as a primary also and secondary also sir. okay so can you tell in the intestinal tuberculosis which is primary and which is secondary? The ulcerative type of uh, tuberculosis becomes a uh, secondary to a pulmonary tuberculosis, whereas the hyperplastic variety is a uh, per se primary one. Right. What are yeah, the other you know, differences between the primary and the secondary intestinal tuberculosis? So, what about the virulence of the bacteria? So the, the immunity of the host is there. So the ulcerative type is said to be more virulent than the apoplastic and the immunity of the it ulcerative type happens in more immunocompromised patients, whereas the apoplastic can occur even in a healthy individual, right. well-nourished. 
Okay. Yeah, yoga, just uh, remember that uh, when you are dealing with such lumps in the right iliac fossa, never forget to mention about the lymphomas which can present and some retroperitoneal tumors also can present in this location. And uh, on occasionally you can see uh, ectopic kidney which uh, where you know patient has developed a mass in the kidney right which can also okay. be a differential in this uh, in this situation right okay do not forget the appendix I do know. not forget the appendix okay, sir. okay. yeah so malignancy ileocecal tuberculosis and appendicular these are three most important one and then there can be any other which may be there yeah okay sir. Before going for the examination, just a small uh, question to you. Why on the right side we are considering the ileocecal tuberculosis as a differential diagnosis, whereas on the left side we do not consider? Any answer to it? So I think ileocecal region has a more propensity to develop a tuberculosis rather than the left side, sir. Any particular reason? So I think it's uh, because of the pear patches, which is more on the ileocecal side, as well as the... Uh, Fluid uh, content in ileocecal valve also plays a role, which happens yeah. uh, happens to be a, creating a lot of stasis there uh, because the bacilli has a lot of contact period over that time. And uh, one more reason could be... Uh, Alkaline media on the right side. It favors the... the Very good answer. Good. So uh, proceed for examination. Yeah. Shall I proceed, sir? Yeah, please. Examination. Yes, sir. General examination. The patient is alert, conscious, oriented to time, place, and person. The patient is moderately built and nourished, well hydrated. Weight of 57 kg, height of 176 centimeter, with a BMI of 18.40 kilogram per meter squared. ECOG was 1 and Karnofsky performance scale 80. On examination, there was no pella, no ictrus, no clubbing, no cyanosis, no bilateral pitting edema, no peripheral lymphadenopathy. If April on touch, temperature of 98.6 degree Fahrenheit, pulse rate of 96 beats per minute on right radial artery with regular rhythm and good volume. A uh, patient had a BP of 110 by 68 millimeter of mercury in a supine position in the right brachial artery. Respiratory rate of 22 breaths per minute, abdominal thoracic type and a saturation of 98 percentage on room air. Per abdominal examination, on inspection, after getting informed consent from the patient and well exposed light and privacy, the patient was examined. On ex examination, the abdomen was flat. All quadrants were moving proportionately with respiration. There was a fullness in the right lower abdomen. Bilateral flanks appear normal. Umbilicus is inverted and in the midline. No dilated vein sinus or fistula. No visible peristalsis and pulsation. Lump becomes rest prominent on straight leg, lugging, rise, straight leg raising test. Hernial orifices, there was no cuff, visible cuff pimples present. Inspection of the back and spine was unremarkable and external genitalia appear normal. This is a clinical photograph of the patient's abdomen. Per abdominal examination, on superficial palpation, there was no local rise in temperature or tenderness. A well-defined globular lump of 10 cross 6 cm was palpable in the right iliac fossa with smooth surface, hardened consistency, which was not moving with respiration and well-defined borders. No other lump was palpable in the abdomen and no tenderness on deep palpation. Liver and spine, spleen not palpable. Hernial orifices were intact. No fluid thrill, no spinal deformity and paraspinal tenderness. No renal angle tenderness or fullness. On percussion, the liver span was 13 cm in the mid-clavicular line. Percussion over the lump is dull. No shifting dullness. Bilateral renal angles were resonant. On auscultation, bubble sounds were present. On PR, the perianal skin was normal. Uh, on DRE, there was no mask. Mucosa was freely mobile, no free fluid or deposit. Finger fecal staining was present and no blood stain was present. External genitalia, unremarkable and prostate was normal. Systemic examination, all the systems were unremarkable. Summary, a 34 years old gentleman in the lower abdomen, uh, with the pain in the lower abdomen for six months, with a gradually progressive lump for six months, with loss of appetite and loss of weight, with no fever or altered bowel habits, bleeding per rectum or melina. On examination, consistent with a lump of 10 cross centimeter of hard consistency, immobile and with smooth surface.
So what inference you uh, get after uh, now uh, combining your history with the examination findings? In light of examination findings, now what is your take on the diagnosis? I'm uh, keeping a malignancy or as a, my first differential now because after examination, so. No, carcinoma secum or ascending colon. Malignancy. Carcinoma. Yes. Carcinoma secum or ascending colon as my first differentials. That is your first diagnosis. Okay. So what are the points in history and what are the points on examination which favor a colonic, uh, right colonic uh, malignancy in this patient? Points in history, sir. There is a pain with lump and I have, by mistake, I've mentioned gradually progressive by history wise. He has said it's a rapidly progressive. And there was a loss of appetite and loss of weight also. On examination, the patient had a lump which was hard in consistency, immobile, and well defined. Bulbous. So, lump which is hard in consistency and uh, immobile that goes yes, in sir. favor of a malignant. And as per history, you are telling that patient had anorexia and loss of weight. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other differential you would like to keep here? Uh, Again, ileocecal tuberculosis because of the no, age factor. That is your provisional diagnosis. Yes, sir. Uh, provisional diagnosis could... is of malignancy. So, second, could be. so first differential diagnosis, if you are you want to keep as ileocecal tuberculosis. Yeah, differential first is ileocecal tuberculosis. And then I would like to keep lymphoma also, sir. So is the classic picture presentation of lymphoma in your patient? Did he give no, any sir. history of fever ever? No, sir. Okay. Yoga Priya, uh, you are saying the patient has a loss of weight, loss of appetite. But in a general examination, patient is absolutely normal. No, nothing you are able to make it out, you are saying. Second one, you are putting your abdomen as a flat, but you are saying the lower abdomen is bulging. And how do you get a flat abdomen? And at the same time, there is also a bulge, which we are able to see that. So I was mentioning the rest of the abdomen, sir. I might have been wrong there. I'll change it, sir. You were telling the flanks were full, isn't it? You said no, the sir. flanks were full. No, sir. I no. said... Did you say that? Appear flanks normal. Are... By little flanks appear normal, I said, sir. Hmm? Okay. You are saying flat. Second one, you are saying a globular mass in the abdomen. Pardon, sir, I couldn't. When you say global, it means all the surface you are able to see. Are you able to see all the surface of this mass? And the size was 10 into 6. Can we have a 10 into 6 a globular mass? Because I you was are able to. Small things which we do not make a mistake, no? And uh, I mean, suddenly you are bringing in uh, tuberculosis for what reason? How do you, why do you say that is uh, fitting into your tuberculosis diagnosis? So the age is one of the factors, sir. And tuberculosis can also have a loss of uh, appetite or weight because, but there no, you is are no talking fever about or hyperplastic age. tuberculosis or a, you are talking about hyperplastic type or infiltrated type? It's a hyperplastic type more common in this individual, sir. Ulcerative type or hyperplastic type you are talking? Hyperplastic type. It can. It does not need so to have a constitution. So you get hyperplastic symptoms. type patient having uh, all the all these feature of loss of appetite, loss of things. No. Sir. And such a big mass producing without any other uh, the symptoms with the bubble habits. You said absolutely the bubble habit is normal. Yes, sir. There's such a big mass, you are saying it is arising in the ileocecal junction. It is not producing any symptoms? I think my uh, first differential uh, should have been different. My provisional, I would like to stick with uh, carcinoma sequel or ascending colon. How sure you are it is from the uh, GA tract first? Why not? It is not related to the GA tract at all. Uh, in one of the which it is an intraperitoneal one. So, since it's an intraperitoneal mass, I kept uh, GI as the first one. Consistency, consistency of the mass. 
can it be a presentation of a malignant gist arising from the bowel uh, in this location? It could be, sir. You are there. One trick is there. Yes, right leg fossa mass is a very difficult, uh, actually, case presentation for a postgraduate. When you are sticking that it is a case of a carcinoma, try to stick to it. Don't just yes, uh, get uh, or change uh, your version when the examiner compels to do so. Got my point? This is rule yes, number one. If you do so, that means you were not thorough in the examination or you were not thorough in your diagnosis. So if you are telling that it is a carcinoma, stick to it. Make the differential diagnosis as tuberculosis in the first go. And second is that, see, as sir told, can it be a gist? Yes, possibility is there. GIST, you have not uh, uh, thought of it. GIST can also be like that also. But the only thing you need to rule out, whether it's a tuberculosis, malignancy, or gist, based on the clinical findings. Got my point? Okay. So can it be a case of a gist, actually? Why we are telling so? Because such a large tumor in the illicitical region and the patient is not having any GI problem is little uh, doubtful. Got my point? So we should yes, think of something extra luminal probably, which is not causing the problem. Of course, in the right side, there can be. Without problem also, manifestation can be there, but not with such a large mass as shown in the uh, scenario. Okay? So, okay, sir. Okay, so gist, why can't it be a gist? Can you just uh, tell a few lines about it? So, the patient doesn't have any luminal symptoms, that is fine, but uh, he doesn't have any other pertaining GI symptoms also, sir, if he's having a gist. And I would uh, consider no, no need. those more. No, he's extra luminal, no? There is no need. Sometimes it will not produce any symptoms with the GI tract. Because your mass is looking, even it is almost it is crossing the midline. An inspection we are we are seeing that it is not towards the uh, even right leg posa or typically it is not in the ileocecal junction it is going more towards the medial side okay gist is intraluminal or extra luminal extra luminal that is why gist is a possibility that is why it is not causing any gi symptoms got it that is that okay. differential diagnosis you should not forget Okay, in your general examination, you did not tell about the hydration status of the patient. Because six mm -hmm. months the patient had the... Did you tell them about the hydration status? Okay, sorry, yes, I missed it. Okay, good. So, what was the nutritional status of the patient? So he said he had a loss of weight, but uh, weight uh, his weight was 57 kg on presentation with a height of 176 centimeter with a BMI of 18.40, so, which I would say is not a ideal weight for his height. Okay, if, so uh, what did you assess in this actually by calculating the BMI? Pardon, sir? What did you assess the macronutrient? Which one did you assess in the BMI? So Which BMI will say about... Uh, uh, what are the macronutrients? Car yes. Car carbohydrate should be for BMI, yes. sir. Yes. So only carbohydrate intake we showed... Uh, Take the history or something else also. What are the other proteins and proteins and fats also should be in consideration. How do you assess clinically the proteins? So I think for protein, I would like to look for the mid-arm circumference of the patient. Yes. And if it's a fat, I would look for the skin fold thickness of the patient. Sir. Very good. So about the generalization, why about taking this Karnowski's perform scale? How will it help you? So it is actually to assess the post. Uh, like if we are intervening in the patient or if the patient is having a, if we are thinking towards a malignancy or carcinoma, uh, we this performance status would uh, give us an idea about the status of the patient post-intervention also, sir. Like if we are uh, going for a major operative procedure or any chemotherapy or radiotherapy or anything we are planning for the patient, this performance status would help us to... Yes, before proceeding for any major intervention, it will be helping you to decide. Good. What is COG? What is the European Eastern? I'm sorry, sir. Eastern Corp. Eastern Corp. Group. I'm sorry, sir. I'm suddenly forgot. Now, when you should do the ECOG and when you should do the Karnofsky? 
like in your case, if you have to give one status here, which one you like to give? Karnofsky or ECOG? I think ECOG, sir. No. ECOG only for malignancy. If you are 100% sure me. it is malignancy, then only you go for ECOG. But if okay. you got a doubt about that, that whether it is IUCL tuberculosis or it is a malignancy, then is the Karnofsky. So here, okay. ideally, you should have written the Karnofsky, not the ECOG, because you are still not sure of the diagnosis. Okay, sir. Why do you want to put uh, BMI as 18.4 kilogram per meter square? What do you mean by that? Is it a unit? Yes, sir. I unit use... or BMI? BMI as a unit. Kilogram per meter square is the formula with which you are going to get the value. In any unit, we don't put a formula for how do we arrive. In other words, in the chemotherapy track, we put as a kg per meter square. That has a different meaning. Okay, so sir. here you can, it is only 18.4 is a number. That is, you are arriving at that. It is better to put only 18.4. Yes, certain books will put, but that is usually a formula which there is no need to put as a kg per meter square. Okay, How sure you are it is an intraperitoneum? So the, only test I could do, the only test I did was a straight leg rising test in which the uh, swelling lump became less prominent, sir. Can it be a, a, a recent history or some other injury to the uh, uh, rectus and bleed from the rectus put get organized and put a swelling like that? The patient didn't have any history of trauma or any injury to the abdomen. He is a, is a uh, male, no? Have you thought of any any other tumor from the scrotum you examined? It is normal? External genitalia was normal, sir. I ruled out any testicular mass or External any other testis. Scrotum is different. Testis is different. Have you palpated the testis? Yes, sir. I did check up the testis, sir. For, look for any undescended testis or any mass per se. So, in certain circumstances, a uh, patient of right colonic malignancy in due course of time may also develop uh, synchronous or metachronous lesions, right? So, the, yes. they can uh, present with either melina or bleeding per rectum, right? So, you should defend your diagnosis of carcinoma right-sided colon, right? Okay. Dr. Yoga, sir told yes, something sir. about synchronous and metachronous lesions. Let us assume now that your provisional impression, we also are accepting that it's a case of a malignancy. Okay. So what is a synchronous lesion? What is a metachronous lesion? Can you just tell a few lines about it? A synchronous lesion is a primary lesion which is occurring within the six months of a period of the diagnosis of the first lesion. So like if I'm diagnosing a carcinoma now within six months of the time period, if I'm finding one more primary lesion, then I would term it as a synchronous, where if it is more than that, I would term it as a metachronous. Okay. What is the name of the definition? Actually, uh, the what you gave? Any name to this? Who gave that? Mortals definition. Okay. No issues. Okay. I think so. So, if you are thinking that it's a case of a malignancy on the right side of the colon, so let us now how will you manage this patient? Because we are running short of time. So, let us assume that it's a right iliacosa mass. And we are left with uh, three different cell diagnoses. Now, the first one, the provisional impression you gave a malignancy. Second one, ileocecal tuberculosis. Third one is a gist. Got it? Now, how okay. do we take this patient? First, I would like to do for a routine biochemical investigation for the patient, followed by which I would look up an ultrasound of the patient, ultrasound of the abdomen. And based on the findings, I would uh, do for a CCT abdomen, sir. So, in a patient of uh, right-sided colonic malignancy, what uh, in information you may gather on ultrasonography? 
So first of all, if the patient has a short history in ultrasound, I would look for the appendix first, sir. If the patient is having any appendicitis or any appendicular lump formation, Yoga, do then... you expect that in this big lump you will like to see you no, you can see ultras appendix separately? Can you? No, sir. No, sir. I said if the patient is having a short history in ultrasound, I would see. In this history, okay. I am expecting to see a lump or any clumped bubble loops or. Yes. Mm -hmm. What else you can uh, uh, see on ultrasound, which can actually uh, confirm your diagnosis of malignancy, at least on ultrasonography. Can't you appreciate certain lymph nodes? Lymph, node, lymph nodal status I can assess. Free fluid. Free fluid or? You can see free fluid as well. And what, what else you can see? You can also, if there are the metastatic deposits in the liver. liver, as you are making a diagnosis of this much big lump in that two arising from the um, so you know that uh, uh, in choleric pregnancies, there may, may be a chance that patient might present with liver metastasis, right? So can you yes. catch that on a sonography? You can, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so, what next investigation? I would like to go for a CCT, CT abdomen, sir. CCT abdomen. Dr. Amit, I'll just, so, uh, just yeah. one point. Yes. Dr. Yoga, when the question was asked, how will you manage the patient, your answers would have been, I will do certain investigations first to prove my diagnosis or make my diagnosis. Then you go in for other investigations to... Uh, see for the biochemical and all this, but you started with biochemicals. Got it? It's a common mistake uh, done by the students. Never do this. You just divide into two groups because you're, we are in confusion right now whether it is a tuberculosis or a, a this a malignancy. Got it? Okay. Please carry on. Okay. Uh, we have Dr. Abhay Dalvi with us. So, uh, sir, please, you will you like to make a comment over her presentation or uh, will you like to ask I, some no, questions? No, no, no. I have joined late, sir. Uh, I've joined late, so I am not very well versed with what is going on. But the issue is whether malignancy, uh, tuberculosis, or gist, these are the things which are going on. I think yes, I hear everything and come back. Sure, sir, sure. Okay, Yoga, uh, what will be your next investigation? You said CT. Yes, okay, sir. so what will be the picture in the CT like for a colon? I would like to see if there is any growth or thickening of the bubble wall. And uh, I would uh, have, have, have the... you CT scan films of this, uh, this patient? Yes, sir, I do have. Please, can you show? Yes. So what, what you can observe here? I could uh, see a... Uh, growth which is actually in this thing is also it is going towards the anterior abdominal wall a thickened loop but uh, per se I am not uh... focus here in the so, previous uh, slide the previous slide no next Sandra? yes just three so, no yes yes this one this one ne previous one Bas, just focus here. What do you see in this slide? So I would look. Uh, I'm looking for the nodes also, sir. Multiple nodes, uh, nodal state, uh, nodal of that, and then the thickening also, sir, in the ascending so, colon. Okay, so you can appreciate the thickening in the right-sided colon. What else yes, you sir. can see? Can you appreciate a growth? Is it intraluminal or extraluminal? Intraluminal only, I am able to appreciate it as. Yes, it is intraluminal. And what else you can see? The lymphadenopathy, sir. The lymphadenopathy, wall. lymphadenopathy. And is it uh, going into the lateral parietes? Yes, sir. Okay. So, what was the status of liver on CT? So it was uh, enlarged alone, sir, but no metastasis was seen. Okay. 
Is there any role of colonoscopy in such patients? Yes, sir. It is actually the investigation of choice uh, because I would like to go for a colonoscopy and if there is a growth or anything which I find, I would like to take a biopsy and confirm the diagnosis, sir. Was colonoscopy done for this patient? In the colonoscopy? Sir? What are the things you are going to see in the colonoscopy? So in colonoscopy, first I would look for a growth or if there are any polyps in the patient. If I am uh, keeping a carcinoma as my diagnosis, I would also look like to look for polyps in the patient, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I would look for the rest of the bubble. How uh, uh, any lesions I could find any other any other lesions in the bubble other than the primary which I'm keeping as a diagnosis, any synchronous lesions which I'm finding in the colonoscopy. So you're going to look for the primary, you're going to look for any synchronous lesions and you're going to see for any pre-malignant condition. All. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How many biopsies you will take? I think four, sir. Four pieces should minimum. Six to eight biopsies. You know, just like in the stomach, we have to take over six to eight biopsies of that. Okay, sir. Now, if the patient doesn't agree for the colonoscopy, can you go for oh, virtual sure. colonoscopy? You know, what is virtual colonoscopy? Oh, yeah. So, so it is done by CT Yoga Priya. <laughs> okay, virtual colonoscopy is done either with the help of the CT or MRI, okay. where you are taking the multiple pictures in that, and then you are creating the picture like the colonoscopy jail. Okay. You are not setting the endoscope there, but it is with the help of the CT or the MRI. You can do that. Okay, sir. So basically, you are doing a 3D reconstruction of the colonic image, right? Okay, so in this patient, what was the finding of the colonoscopy? So in colonoscopy, they were able to find only an ascending colon structure near the hepatic flexure with edematous mucosa. So the scope was not negotiable beyond that structure. And you have mentioned biopsy was non-specific colitis. So the initial biopsy came out to be non-specific colitis only, sir. So does that rule out malignancy or even tuberculosis? Uh, it is a non-specific colitis, so it cannot rule out both, sir. I would okay. still Yoga, like I mean, to all the both. discussion, uh, we didn't touch about the inflammatory bowel disease. Dr. Yes, Prakash Sarsman, you agree with me? Should should yes, have it in there? Yeah. You also so, said we should think of that. Yeah. Yoga, what is your take on that? Can it be a case of inflammatory bowel disease? Seeing the age of the patient. Seeing the age of the patient, I would consider, but uh, there was no history uh, suggestive of that, sir. What, what history? What history? <laughs> Pardon, sir? What history were uh, you expecting in a case of colitis? So, uh, any uh, alternating bo alternate, uh, altered bubble habits he could have given me an history, sir. And uh, mucus discharge or anything when he is having an altered bowel. That. What are the types of uh, this inflammatory bowel disease you encounter in India commonly? Have you ever seen a patient of this inflammatory bowel disease? I have seen patient of ulcerative colitis, sir. Why? Crohn's mm -hmm. disease you have not seen? Crohn's, I've seen, but more on ulcerative colitis. So you're lucky. So uh, ulcerative colitis is very common. Okay. Crohn's yes. disease is not that common in India. So uh, this regional LAT is because you told colonoscopy finding till the sicum there was no finding. So the colonoscopy till ascending colon, they were able to see. Far post that they could not pass it. Okay. Had it been case of a ulcerative colitis, what finding were you expecting? I would expect any uh, any inflammation in the rectum or there itself because the pro patient might have proctitis or Very pathology good. inflammation. So it was normal. So Okay. 
all this suppose it is only limited to this uh, ileocecal region which variant will you expect regional ileitis i couldn't follow sir regional ileitis that is only the ileocecal region is affected so is it crohn's crohn's i would consider some more good okay let us now assume because time is uh, running off so someone let's say a case of malignancy you are suspecting but you did not get any evidence but the supportive evidence of malignancy what did you get coloscopy is inconclusive yes sir what will you do the next so ct was a uh, evidence to what was the evidence in the ct only thickening was there and it was uh, probably it was a uh, circumferential thickening but there was a lymphadenopathy also present okay so uh, circumferential thickening with lymphadenopathy with uh, this mucosa appearance which is just only just uh, there is no ulcerated lesion uh, in this uh, coloscopy finding so can it be a, also a feature of intestinal tuberculosis yes or it no? could be so yes so structure is there uh, mesenteric lymphadenopathy if it's there and if it the rest of the bowel is also fine i would consider it also very good so ascending colon no structure is in the ascending colon yes sir you get a ileocecal tuberculosis structure in the ascending colon no sir what will you advise to your colonoscopist to take the tissue how will you diagnose intestinal tuberculosis are you there yes i am there uh... okay how will you diagnose malignancy very simple you send it for uh, histopathology but tuberculosis cp nat i would send sir how will you send formalin yeah. oh okay uh, cb nat will go in normal very good normal sir yes. so you have to instruct your uh, colonoscopist okay or gastroenterologist now what is this criteria for the diagnosis of intestinal tuberculosis have you heard about postian's criteria sir i'm not aware okay because these are these are the essential things which will be helping you in making the diagnosis got it okay. so either histology will be showing that of the what are the histological features in case of intestinal tuberculosis so what is specific finding what do you see which type of granulomas Uh, Ishiting granuloma cell be present, sir. Yes, epithelial cells, plasma cells, Langhans type of giant cells. Got it. So if yes. you are getting that, then it is a diagnosis. Or operative findings will be suggestive of tuberculosis or mesenteric lymphadenopathy. So you can take one lymph node also send it for CBN. Tissue positive for this AFB staining also will be one of the criteria. If positive, then will be supportive. Sometimes tissue culture also reveals mycobacteria, although it will be taking a long time. Lot of so time. out of this, uh, out of this, any one will be a postian criteria. So will be supporting intestinal tuberculosis. Got it? Yes. So you uh, what in uh, surgical treatment can you offer to this patient? So I, I didn't follow, sir. Because what surgical treatment can you offer to this patient? This for this patient, I would uh, offer a right hemicolectomy. Sir. What what actually you understand by right hemicolectomy? How much bowel will you resect, and which major arteries or which arteries you will ligate? Mm -hmm. So, uh, for right hemicolectomy, the specimen which I'll be taking out is a distal part of ileum, cecum, appendix with ascending colon, sir, and uh, part of transverse colon, and the vessel which will be ligated is a ileocecal pedicle, right colic, and right branch of middle colic. So in the recent years, uh, what has been the shift in uh, uh, format of right hemicolectomy when you are doing it for malignancy? So in you know the what advanced, is, uh, what is CVM, in advanced, what is the deeply dissection as you do in rectum complete mesocolon uh, trans uh, TME? So here we prefer in, a uh, uh, right colon. 
in here we prefer something called a mesocolic yes. complete mesocolic excision so where we yes. address the vascular pedicle first yes. uh, like complete ligation of the vascular pedicle and then uh, we'll then go for the uh, so it is cm like plus cvl a... that is complete mesocolic excision as you rightly said and central vascular ligation right ligation. with d3 lymph nodal dissection right so what do you understand by d3 lymph nodal dissection in such cases so uh... so Sorry. that's what the benefit of the pgs d1 dissection is when lymph nodes are uh, resected in the Five centimeters uh, from the primary tumor, and when lymph nodes you are resecting uh, uh, in five to ten centimeters uh, in the vicinity of the tumor, and when beyond ten centimeters or just at the junction of you know, at the origin of uh, these ileocolic vessels, when you are removing those lymph nodes, then it is termed as D3 dissection. So that is oncologically the most safe dissection, right? And studies have demonstrated that the local recurrence or dis even distal recurrences are very less in that they are lesser in the range of say 15 to 22 percent right dr yoga but i'll yeah. still stick that because your colonoscopy finding was inconclusive will you go in for a radical right hemicolectomy or something else what will be your approach so radical i would still see because if the patient is having a lump which ct suggests but colonoscopy is inconclusive uh instead of offering a patient like if i say uh, remove the specimen and then send it for a biopsy and it turns out to be a malignancy i think radical right hemicolectomy would be a better approach but in your ct actually it was infiltrating the anterior uh, uh, abdominal muscles yes, so will you still go in for a radical when the patient is not having any symptom at all Accepting the right left fossa mass. How sure are you that you will be able to proceed with a radical colectomy? You know, this is a practical thing I'm asking. I think. Indeed, we you went want... in for a, a. We did actually a right radical hemicolectomy for the patient. Sir. No, no, no. Don't think what uh, you have done it. Think in a reasonable so I way. think oh. uh, in a reasonable way, I think it is a pretty, uh, it's a, if it's an anterior abdominal wall infiltration also, it is difficult to go for a radical approach. Okay. Let us assume that it is a malignancy, patient is elderly with this infiltration of the surrounding structure. How do you approach? You are thinking okay. and also colonoscopy okay. so that it is adenocarcinoma. I will just see whether the patient is stable or not, whether the patient is presenting as a obstructive symptoms or non-obstructive symptoms. If it's a patient has an obstructive symptoms and an elderly female, I would initially, and presence as an emergency one, I would initially try to do a bypass rather than a resective procedure. Whereas in case of a stable patient, I would consider to go for a resective procedure, sir. No, no, it is already infiltrating the anterior parietal muscle, maybe that posteriorly swasm. Then something. I would consider going for a new adjuvant. Very good. So there Before is a scenario the where you can think of a new adjuvant chemotherapy in case of colon malignancy in this type of scenarios. You should not go in for a radical when you know that it is infiltrating the surrounding structure and the diagnosis is not confirmed. Okay, can you do any stool test? Because the inflammatory bowel disease came in the pictures, right? So, fecal can you do any stool test? To, hmm? Fecal elastase, I'll look, sir, if it's an IBD. Sorry, sorry, fecal calprotectin, I'll see, sir. You do the calprotectin in that, right? and that will suggest that. Can you do for a percutaneous FNAC in this patient to confirm your diagnosis, though the colonoscopy has not given that? Is there any harm in doing that? A lump which is already infiltrating the anterior abdominal wall. You are not getting a diagnosis on the colonoscopy. Can you do a percutaneous? I think tumor seedling will be there if I go for it. It's already percutaneous. there, you know. It is already involving the anterior abdominal wall. I'm not sure. What, that. Why you are bothered about that? Definitely sure you will get a diagnosis. You know, you cannot start the chemotherapy without the diagnosis. Yes. You sir. have to have a firm diagnosis before you start the chemotherapy. If you are planning for the new adjuvant in this patient, you should have a 
some type of the tissue biopsy. So if you are not getting it through the colonoscopy, you can go it by the percutaneous hair. There will be no problem in this patient. Okay, sir. Confirm that. What okay. is the difference between the right hemicolectomy for the tuberculosis and the malignancy? What is the difference? Uh, lymph node clearance, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh... so if you talk in terms of lymph node clearance, which lymph nodes are removed in case of the tuberculosis and which are removed in the case of the... <clears throat> Tell what are the four groups of the lymph nodes around the colon? Paracolic, epicolic, intermediate and central group of lymph nodes. Are so which you are going to remove in tuberculosis and which you are going to remove in malignancy? I think malignancy, I would include the central group of nodes also. And all, the, complete. Yeah, all the four groups yes. of the nodes will go in the malignancy. While in case of tuberculosis, it is only the epicolic and epicolic the paracolic. And, paracolic. and the extent of the hemicolectomy? Any difference in the extent of the hemicolectomy? <clears throat> in tuberculosis, you can go for the limited hemicolectomy. Limited ileocecal resection. While in case of the malignancy, you have to go for the definite radical, radical. operation. Okay, Have you thought of this carcinoembryonic antigen also? What is the role of yes, this? Yes, sir. So it is, uh, preoperatively, I would look for it if it has increased or not. But uh, mostly it is used as a prognostic marker rather than a preoperative investigation. Like after a resection, I would like to follow up the patient with a CEA. Good. You know what is Turnbull technique for the hemicolectomy? Or no touch technique for the hemicolectomy? Uh, I think it is uh, not handling the tumor much and going for a vascular ligation, addressing the vascular pedicle first completely and then uh, going for the tumors. The only the vascular ligation prior, anything else in the no touch technique? Uh, <clears throat> medial to lateral approach will be there, sir. Yes. And what else? You ligate the lumen before you touch the tumor. Bubble clamp, we will yeah, do and will, then... Yeah, you will put the bowel clamps. And the cut ends of the bowel has to be cleaned with the, some tumorcidal drugs. Okay. Okay, so, these are the three components of the no-touch technique. Vascular clamping first, bowel clamping first, and on the cut ends, you have to put some tumorcidal agents there. So, that was initially okay. the Turnbull technique. So, in your case, actually, right here, collected What was the finding? So, we had uh, infiltrating growth, which was actually adhered to, completely to the anterior abdominal wall. And uh, we did a right hemicolectomy for the patient. So, lymphadenopathy was also addressed. And uh, what was the pathological report? So, it is awaited, sir. Yeah. Patient was decently operated. If it comes out to be adenocarcinoma, what is your further plan in this patient? So, since there was an infiltrating T4 lesion according to CT, I would like to go for an adjuvant chemotherapy also, sir. Mm -hmm. You'd like to add the radiotherapy also or not? Uh, CT, RT, I will. Mm, you give both chemo radiotherapy in this patient. Mm -hmm. How many minimum lymph nodes need to be healed for staging? At least... 12 lymph nodes should be assessed, so for a... And suppose it comes out to be tuberculosis? I couldn't follow, sir. Pardon? Supposedly it comes out to be suspicious of tuberculosis. I would like to start the patient on ATT, sir, anyway. Even if I had addressed the issue. Okay. How many days you will you give? Or months? How many months will you give? What is the regimen? So extra pulmonary, if it's a newly diagnosed, then I would go for a four of HR, uh, two of HRZ T plus four of HR. So newly diagnosed, if I keep. So intensive is how many drugs will you give? Four. Four and continuous. I'll go for two. Okay. 
what are the gross intraoperative differences between a Crohn's and the tuberculosis? You opened a case and you are not sure that is it Crohn's or it is tuberculosis. So what are the various differences between that on gross examination? The ileocecal tuberculosis, there will be a, if I open there, there will be a pulled up cecum also present. Okay. And uh, so first is the structure. Stru right, no? Structuring growth will be present more in Crohn's. So, rather in than a... so what is the difference between a structure of the tuberculosis and the structure of the Crohn's? How many numbers will be there in Crohn's, Dr. Yogopriya? It will be a single one. No, so I think TB will be a single structure rather than Crohn's will be a you multiple. More than one. And is there anything based on the fat creeping of the mesentery or the mesocolon in inflammatory bowel disease? So normally you have the fat creeping more than what you normally find, right? Less than fat creeping happens. And then most importantly... But try the TB clinics again. Yeah? Mm, yes, the tuberculosis generally gives intense fibrosis depending upon the stage of the disease. If you are treated tuberculosis, then the mesentery gets shorter because of dense fibrosis. The nodes go into fibrosis. The dominant box, I look at uh, local mass. I look colic mass. Mass in right leg, so sorry for that. So generally, the medialization and superiorization of the ileocecal complex happen in tuberculosis. Whereas Crohn's and IBD, they are locally fibrotic. They don't move up. There will be inflammation of the fat component of the mesentery also. So the fat tries to creep over the small bowel or the large bowel also. And then generally you get to see skip lesions. You have more than one lesion. Crohn's is a predominantly small bowel disease, right? Can be structured, it can be perforated, or in between there can be associated inflammatory changes depending upon the severity of inflammation and what time you are intervening. Crohn's is always a disease of remission and activity. Depending on that, you will see that. That's the difference you should tell us. When you open the specimen, then you have a different set of findings you have to tell. All right. Okay. Uh, Professor Abhay, sir, I could see your hands up, sir, please. And what about the lymph nodes in Crohn's and the tuberculosis? Any difference on gross examination? Necrotic lymph nodes I would address. In... Yeah, if you find a cadiation, it is for the tuberculosis. You will get the enlarged lymph nodes in Crohn's. But if the cagation is there, that is suggestive of the tuberculosis. tuberculosis. So the short structure or the long structure, Crohn's has got the long structures while the tuberculosis has the short structures. Overriding of the mesentery by the fat which is there in the Crohn's and not in the tuberculosis. And third is the KGS type of lymph nodes in the case of the tuberculosis Tuber and not in the Crohn's. Right. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, just describe this picture to me and tell me whether a radical surgery has been done. So here I will see the distal ileum with the growth as well as the cecum all clump and the ascending colon with the completely so. And lymph node, uh, mesentric Central group of lymph nodes, I won't be able to be seeing in that, whereas the paracolic and epicolic can be No, I, ju I just want to ask you one question. Yes, when sir. you do a radical job, how does the mesentery yes, look in a rejected specimen? So, do you have another photograph also of the specimen? No, sir. Yoga Priya, the yes, message, yes, what Darvitar is trying to ask is, See, post-operatively, when you take picture of the specimens, it has to be picked with drawing pins or something. 
the main important thing is a minimum of 7 to 8 centimeter of the feeding vessel to the tumor location has to be there. That is the current recommended guideline. If you remove that much of mesocolon or mesentery along with the feeding pedicle only, it becomes a complete mesocolic excision. That is what sir would like to address. In your specimen, it looks the mesentery or the mesocolon are very limited. It, it looks less radical. That's what sir is pointing out. Whenever you take picture, it is better you take in a pit board or a drawing board with the natural orientation and the stretch of the moment you remove the specimen from the patient's body, it starts contracting. Many times that's how we are challenged with the degree of the resection margin, degree of the clearances. And other so it looks your picture is telling it is a limited resection or a less optimal oncological resection. So you please address to that issue. What is that means the complete oncological clearance of total complete mesocolic excision? That will answer Professor Dalvisa's question. Yeah, my, my only thing is that the mesentery or mesocolon usually should be triangle if it is radical. And this looks like a limited resection. If we, you have gone with a diagnosis of malignancy, then I think I should have seen a better better specimen. That's all. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the picture, sir. I should have uploaded a better one. Uh, faculty, uh, I think we will limit this case. Uh, I will allow Yoga Priya to ask any doubts or any other comments from the faculty. So, Yoga Priya, do you want to ask any question from the faculty? Any doubts to be clarified? You are welcome to ask. Feel free to ask. So I would. I didn't understand about the mesentery pedicle of seven centimeter, which you were mentioning, sir. So, uh, yes, sir. Please, sir. Amit, sir. Yeah, as you have been told that if you are coming from medial to lateral side, you are taking a lot of uh, fat and a lot of mesentric. So actually, it's a triangular fold. You, if you see, right. It's a reverse V kind of a shape, but uh, actually appears. So I think the specimen photo has not been taken properly or something is yes. looking like this, right? Yes. Okay. See, the idea of yoga priya is to measure. See, when you are doing Turnbull's technique, as Professor Kanasar was telling, you have to ligate at the origin. If it is a right hand colectomy, you go for the heliocolic division, yeah, you do the right colic division. And probably, depending on the extent of disease, you are going to do the right branch or the middle colic as well. But when you take off the vessel at the origin, the length of the vessel from the origin to the tumor is normally above 5 to 7 centimeters. That indicates you have cleared the entire mesocolon also or mesentery also along with the vessel. So whenever you measure, you keep the unstretched mesocolon, keep a scale from the vascular division point to the tumor point, measure with the scale, that gives you the length of the degree of clearance what you have successfully done. So I wish you go back to the Italian paper, which is freely available in the internet, the comprehensive review of the complete mesocolic excision or the D3 colectomies. I wish all of you students should read because as we read for the stomach, the colon also has been numbered with numbers 280, 276, 273. It's a little mind-boggling. But then from the rectum to the small bowel, you have numbered nodes, including lateral lymphadenectomies. They have now numbered nodes. Do not memorize everything, but wish at least you should have a printout in your hostel room or something that helps you to understand the importance of numbered station clearance if you intend to do a complete mesocolic excision right? or a D3 colectomy. It is worthwhile you go to read this article that helps you a very robust understanding for it. All right. Anything else, uh, esteemed faculty? So we can start with second case for today. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Yoga Priya, thank you very much. Ah, you are welcome to stay back for the discussion also. Now I call uh, Dr. Abhijit Rajput. Uh, Dr. Abhijit is kindly contributed by Professor Pankaj Modi, sir, uh, from BJ Medical College, Ahmedabad. Uh, Dr. Abhijit, please introduce yourself, your unit chief, your head of the department, and start your presentation. Good luck to you. Uh, 
faculty please take over make it full screen abhijit yes sir good luck to you good evening all esteemed faculties i am dr abhijit rajput i am a third year general surgery resident at uh, uh, at bj medical college ahmedabad uh, i am presenting a case of uh, carcinoma of breast under guidance of dr pankaj modi sir uh, dr apurv shah sir and dr vinit sir and dr molik sir my head of department is dr rr R. patel sir uh, i am presenting a case of a 60 year old uh, post menopausal lady Uh, who is a housemaker by uh, occupation belonging to lower socio economic class residing at ahmedabad gujarat presenting to me with chief presenting to us with chief complaints of lump lump in left breast for last 2 years the uh, patient was asymptomatic 2 years back then she noticed lump in her left breast which was insidious in onset initially smaller in size which increased progressively in the last 3 months to current uh, size she also noticed retraction of nipple for last 2 months a uh, patient has no complaints of pain over the lump ulceration of nipple or nipple discharge she has no history of loss of appetite or a significant weight loss uh, she has no history of fever trauma to breast no history of any lump in the opposite breast or axilla no history of breathlessness cough or hemopsis no history of abdominal pain jaundice no history of headache vomiting or seizures or any bony pain my patient is a known case of type 2 diabetes mellitus and hypertension for the last 7 years and is taking regular medication for the same she has a past history of ischemic heart disease uh, for which she underwent a coronary artery bypass grafting 5 years back uh, a drug history of the patient is that patient is currently on aspirin clopidogrel and metoprolol for a heart disease and metformin for diabetes inalapril for hypertension uh, menstrual and obstetric obstetric history age at menarche was 13 years patient has three children with no history of abortion all children are adequately breastfed for up to 2 years age at first child birth was 23 years last child birth was 30 years ago patient is menopausal for 12 years previously her menstrual cycles were regular she has no history of use of oc pills or any hormone replacement therapy patient is vegetarian sleep and bowel are undisturbed bowel and bladder are undisturbed she has no history of addiction to alcohol or smoking no any allergy to drugs uh, with regards to family history she has no history of similar complaints in any first degree relative uh, so to summarize the history part uh, my patient is a 60 year old post menopausal lady who presented to uh, us with chief complaints of lump in her left breast for the last 2 years which progressively increased in size in last 3 months and it was associated with a nipple retraction okay good presentation dr avijit few questions came to my mind in your presentation only uh, are you able to listen to me yes sir okay you told that low socio economic status how did you assess the low socio economic status in this patient uh sir uh, how one uh, normally assess that sir we ask the family income okay anything else mm. what is yeah. the model the kupu swami scale yes sir kupu swami scale is based on the income of the family and uh occupation occupation of the head of the family sir. education okay once you yeah. know that then only you will be telling low social economic status otherwise you cannot loosely use the term okay sir was there a loss of appetite and weight in this patient sir no history of any loss of appetite or weight loss sir. are you expecting any loss of weight or appetite in case of a carcinoma breast in the beginning uh sir for a ca breast uh weight loss can occur if it has already metastasized so it is not that common okay ah uh, yes sir uh, something you told in the history that 2 years the lump was present and she marked a rapid increase in size in the last 3 months how can we explain it uh sir it could be 
a locally advanced tumor which has progressed uh, 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 which has progressed in the last three months or uh, so mostly uh, locally advanced tumors progress or uh, a malignant phyloids can also progress rapidly sir phyloids. so you to say that a phyloids tumor was there and now it is a case of a malignant phyloids uh no sir no by that i didn't mean but we could uh, based on the rapid growth there could be a phyloid or a locally advanced tumor sir okay let us add in there so what are the various risk factor in your patient uh sir <clears throat> risk factors uh they uh, in uh, in my patient the patient has an age of 60 years sir mm -hmm. increasing age is a risk factor also uh, my patient is obese uh she is she has a uh, uh, and uh, sir she is a known case of hypertension and diabetes which uh, signifies that it could be a metabolic syndrome they can be associated with uh, uh, sorry, breast tumors right to tell what are the other risk factors which are there? Uh, sir, they could be modifiable or non-modifiable. Sir, non-modifiable risk factors are age. Age more than 60 years is a risk factor. Sex, females. Uh, other is uh, early menarche. Early menarche less than uh, before 12 years is a risk factor. Late menopause uh, after 55 years. And... Uh, but, uh, then, sir, uh, non-modifiable risk factors. Uh, uh, so, modifiable risk factors. Can you modify are... the menarche is. Can you modify the age of menarche? Sir, I said non-modifiable uh, age, sex, early menarche, and late menopause. Sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. For uh, modifiable risk any, factors. Any other any other non-modifiable risk factors? There are many important non-modifiable risk factors. Apart from you just told about the age and the sex. What are the other non-modifiable risk factors, which are very important? Mm -hmm. uh, sir, ethnicity could... Uh, what about the family history? Yes, sir. Family history is also... Yes, no, that's the number one. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Family history is the number one. If the patient had a breast cancer herself, if the Sorry. patient had a breast cancer herself, is that a risk factor or not? Sir, I did not get your question, sir. If a patient had a breast cancer on the left side, yes, is sir. she prone to have the cancer on the right side or not? Yes, sir. So that is a non-modifiable risk factor? Yes, sir. Okay, if there's a history of BRCA1, BRCA2 is there, that is also non-modifiable risk factor. Yes, sir. If there's a history of past history of benign breast disease is there. It is also. That is also a non-modifiable. So they are all non-modifiable risk factors and they are in fact are called as absolute risk factors. Okay. Yes, sir. Which benign breast disease can cause the breast cancer? Uh. <clears throat> Sir, if it is a, uh, it's a, it's a sir, the atypical ductal hyperplasia with yes. uh, atypical ductal hyperplasia or atypical lobular hyperplasia uh, could cause the maximum uh, benign, they, they have the maximum risk. Right. Okay. And then others which are there like age of menarche and menopause and obesity and smoking, all yes, those are the relative risk factors. So what is the difference between a relative risk factor and a absolute risk factor? I don't know, sir. Okay. Relative I risk have factors. a question. Yeah, Can I yeah. come in? Yeah, Dr. Abhay, please. Yeah. You said the patient gave you history of retraction of nipple. Can you explain, elaborate on this? Uh, sir, she told that since last three months, her uh, sir, nipples have. Uh, she uh, really noticed it. 
sir as compared to the opposite breast they a 60 year old post menopausal lady who has lumped from 3 years suddenly tells you that there is retraction of nipple and areola what questions were asked to her i am more interested in that because whoever ask these questions are very interesting upcoming doctors can you answer that please if you don't know i'll ask you the second question so i cannot comment sir so explain to me what is retraction of the nipple uh sir it the retraction of the nipple is due to sir, sir if the cooper no i don't want pathology yes i want clinical examination and history you have put it up right you go go back to the previous slide yes she not also notice retraction of nipple for last two months this is a sentence you have put up i want to know it's a very important thing that has been asked to this lady by somebody maybe your resident absolutely important how was this question asked that is my question if you don't have an answer just forget about it go ahead i am through sir i cannot as dr abhay asked about the retraction that is very important can you tell what are the various types of retraction of the nipple uh it could be a slit like retraction or 